What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2019 Samsung Tab A 10.1. Now this is a really nice budget Android tablet and recently they've been on sale pretty much everywhere. Best Buy, Amazon, eBay for $219 to $289 depending on the capacity you choose. There's three different colors to choose from, the gold, silver, or black. I opted for the silver version. I personally wanted to get a hold of the gold one but it wasn't in stock when I ordered mine. So I've had a few days to mess around with this tablet and I absolutely love it. Now, if you've been in the market for an Android tablet and you don't want to spend $400 and you don't want to go super low in like the Walmart tablets, this is probably the best choice right now. I know this is going to get compared to the Amazon Fire 10 tablet because of the pricing, but if it was up to me, I would go with the Samsung Tab A every single day of the week. So inside of the box, you're obviously going to get the tablet. You'll also get your 5 volt charger brick. Unfortunately, this does not support quick charging and your USB type C cable. On one side of the tablet, we have our power button, our volume rocker and our micro SD card slot. It does come with a pop out tool and this slot is good up to 256 gigabytes. On the top side, we have a single pinhole microphone and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack for our headphones. This does utilize USB Type-C for charging or connecting to your PC. Unfortunately, it doesn't support HDMI over USB Type-C. But it does have dual stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos surround sound. Now, if you've never experienced Dolby Atmos, you really need to. It is absolutely amazing. Even though this has these two tiny speakers here, in certain situations, it actually sounds like there's speakers behind you. I mean, it's out of this world. I don't know how they do it. This tablet definitely isn't as thin as the new Samsung 5 SE, but we're only working with a half price tablet. It's 7.5 millimeters thick, which is really good, and 469 grams. Now, I would have loved for this to be a little lighter, but it's got a massive battery in it that lasts over 10 hours. The screen is a 10.1 inch IPS display at 1920 by 1200. It gets super bright and it looks really, really crisp. Moving over to the specs, for the CPU we have the Exynos 7904, this is an octa-core CPU, two A73 cores at 1.8 GHz, and six A53 cores at 1.6. The GPU is a Mali G71 MP2, so this is a dual-core GPU with max boost up to 770 MHz. So in this video I have the 32GB model, which also only has 2GB of LP DDR4 RAM. But if you buy the 64 or the 128 gigabyte, you're going to receive an extra gig of RAM, bringing it up to 3 gigs, which is definitely going to help out with multitasking, but it does bring the price up significantly. I have the 32 gigabyte version with 2 gigabytes of RAM, and I can do everything I want on this tablet. We also get 802.11 AB, GN, and AC dual band Wi-Fi, so we can pick up that 5 gigahertz network, and performance is great with this chip. It also has Bluetooth 5.0, so we can transfer files, connect controllers, keyboards, or even speakers. An 8 megapixel rear camera and a 5 megapixel front camera, both will shoot 1080p at 30 FPS. A 6150 milliamp hour battery, and they claim up to 13 hours of video playback. So for gaming, I'd say around 7 to 8 hours. Out of the box, it's running Android 9.0 with the Samsung One UI, but I have heard a rumor that this will get the Android 10 treatment. As of making this video, prices on these tablets are pretty reasonable. The 32GB model with 2GB of RAM is 219 to 229 The black version is the cheapest at 219 A 64GB model with 3GB of RAM is $279.99. And the 128GB model with 3GB of RAM is $299. But as of making this video, as of putting it out, there's a coupon on Amazon if you're a Prime member for $50 off the 128GB model, bringing it down to $250. I'm not sure how long that's going to last, but if you want to pick one up, links are in the description. So far, everything's been really smooth on the Tab A, from web browsing, video playback, native Android gaming, and even emulation. Since this is a legitimate Samsung tablet, we do have access to the full Google Play Store, and you also have the Galaxy App Store if you want to use that instead. In this video, I'm going to show off some performance benchmark results. I'm going to go over some video playback using Netflix, YouTube, and even Kodi. We'll get into some native Android gaming, and by the end, we'll do a little bit of emulation. The first thing I always like to do with these new Android devices is run some benchmarks. So first up, we have Geekbench 4. On the single core, we scored a 1254, multi 3685. For comparison, I also ran this on the Amazon Fire 10 and the new Samsung Tab S5e, which is a much more expensive tablet. The Fire 10 came in at 1242 on the single core and 2272 on the multi. The S5e, 1627 on single, multi 5470. 
Next up, I ran the Antutu benchmark and we scored a 101,000. In comparison, the Amazon Fire 10 scored a 64,000 and the Samsung S5e 152,000. And the GPU score on the S5e was double that of the Tab A. And finally, 3D Mark running Slingshot Extreme, OpenGL 634, Vulcan 723. Unfortunately, the Fire 10 doesn't support Vulcan, but the OpenGL score was 530, and the S5e came in at 1584 with OpenGL and 1536 with the Vulcan back in. The Wi-Fi speeds on the Tab A are great. My home network is rated at 450 megabits down, and that's over Ethernet and 30 up. Over Wi-Fi with the Tab A, we got 175 down and 24 up. Video playback on the Tab A is great. Here's some Netflix. Everything loads up real quick, and this is really going to depend on your internet connection, but the picture quality, and especially the sound, is outstanding on this tablet. Mathematics first described the possibility of black holes. Martin Schwarzschild's trick was he would actually build up a model of the galaxy. It'll also do the picture in picture mode if you want to watch Netflix or YouTube and do something else at the same time. Same thing with YouTube video playback. It works great on this tablet and we can do 1080p 60 FPS. And finally, for the video test, we have some native playback. This is on the internal storage. It'll work just as well on an SD card. 1080p, 60fps, MP4, no stutters, super smooth. Moving over to some native Android gaming, it's handled everything really well except for one game, Ark Survival Evolved. I put it on low and turned the resolution all the way down, and I still get some stutters every now and then. But this is Need for Speed No Limits, and I've also tested Asphalt 9. They both work great. Unfortunately, Fortnite is not supported on this tablet, but PUBG is. And I was actually really surprised at how well it handles this game. If I had to guess, we're almost at 60 FPS with it. It might be around 50, but it's totally playable on this tablet. And finally, for native Android gaming, we have Minecraft Pocket Edition. I'm only showing it off because I know somebody's going to ask about it. Works really well on this tablet. I also tested out Roblox, and that also works fine. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, emulation works really well on this tablet. We have Dreamcast. I'm actually using the ReDream emulator with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I know somebody's going to ask about it, so I'll go ahead and get it out of the way. The Dolphin emulator is just not going to perform well on this tablet, so you're not going to be able to do GameCube or Wii games. But if you want to do some PS1, some Naomi, some Thomas Wave, SNES, PC Engine, Nintendo DS, NES, Sega Genesis, 32X, all of those are going to work fine here. And it also does Nintendo 64 really well. This is Mupin FC Plus from the Google Play Store running 007 Goldeneye. There are some stutters every once in a while, but that's a given for this game and pretty much any emulator. But one game that's really hard to emulate is Conker's Bad Fur Day, and it does it really well. I also tested out some Sega Saturn emulation using several different emulators from the standalone Yabasa and Shiro to RetroArch. Unfortunately, the chip in this tablet just isn't powerful enough to push these games without frame skip on. And finally, for the emulation portion, we have PSP using the PPSSPP emulator. God of War, Chains of Olympus, and Killzone Liberation aren't going to run well without frame skip, but most everything else should function pretty good. This is Need for Speed Pro Street at 2x resolution with no hacks on. And Tekken 6.
So in the end, the 2019 Samsung Tab A 10.1 is a great tablet for the price. It's actually the best tablet that I've ever tested at this price point. There are more expensive tablets out there that'll outperform this, like the Samsung S5e or even the Samsung Tab 4, and hopefully in the next few months we get the Samsung Tab 5 or 6. It really depends on what they want to name it. But if you're looking to purchase a new Android tablet for around 220 to 250 you really can't go wrong with this. And always remember to check refurbished because I have seen these for around 200 on eBay. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave links in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Samsung Tab 10.1 2019 version, let me know down below. But like always, thanks for watching.